There was police uh, radar over here. I don't know how much we're going. Let me move to the side. Oh, it's all this, oh, it's all that. All the Harley haters. The sound of the exhaust resembles Harley sound. Obviously, it's not that beat twin. It's the whole Harley vibe, Harley feeling, Harley. It's an emotional thing. It's not about the numbers. It's not about the, the specs. You can financially negotiate your way out of uh, out of a fine, if you know what I mean. Now here's the context with uh, what my review or my thoughts or my feelings. Remember, my other bikes are a uh, lowrider ST 2022, 117 cubic inch. That's about a 1,900 cc, a stage two putting out 130. 130 uh, foot-pounds of torque and about 125 horsepower. Uh, 1989 Goldwing, Honda Goldwing GL 1500, and a Royal Enfield 350. When I ride this bike, I always uh, have in mind my experience from my other bikes. So obviously when I say, oh, it's got a lot of torque, what I mean it's compared to my 350. To my Royal Enfield, this has got a lot of torque. Does not have a lot of torque when I compare it to a uh, Lowrider ST. So how do I like this bike? This bike is a blast. It's a blast to ride. It's great in uh, off highway, obviously. On highways, it would do. Yesterday, I hit 131 kilometers per hour, which in miles is. 65, 70, and it did it easily. I've, I've seen people write that it, uh, in the comments, like do the reviews, where they say it's, uh, you feel vibrations and stuff like that. I don't feel vibration, nothing terrible, nothing uh, uncomfortable. So easily does 120 kilometers per hour on the highway. But this bike is not made really for highway speeds, traveling long, long, uh, long hours on the highway, mainly for commute, short commute, a couple hours uh, in the saddle. Great for in-town running errands and stuff like that. A great fun bike, second bike, third bike to have. Now it's got ample torque, enough torque for its needs, for its size. I'll give you an example. Very typical here in India is uh, when it's rural areas, the road is open, but when you get closer to an intersection or a place where they want you to slow down, they don't put out a, a slow down sign. They just put out speed bumps. Now those speed bumps are extremely aggressive. They're about, if you go any, any higher than 15 miles per hour on those speed bumps, you bottom out. When you're riding between these, uh, between the, uh, these uh, sections of speed bumps, go 70 slow down to third gear and you hit that speed bump when you hit that speed bump third gear you're about at around tops 15 uh, 15 miles per hour in third gear when you're almost standing very slow speed you, you don't even downshift you just hit the throttle and the bike pulls the bike chugs chugs its way through through that speed so that's what I mean it's got Low end torque, it chugs. It's like a locomotive. No need to drop a gear. It just pulls. I'm not sure how much the horsepower is on this bike. I'll, I'll put it right up over here. But horsepower is good and important for uh, high RPMs. And over here, I think the red line is uh, six, six and a half. And you never get close to that. The ergonomics is extremely comfortable. You, fit, you sit uh, upright, it's not a typical Harley position. A typical Harley position is with your uh, legs stretched out, like uh, under, under the fuel tank. Over here, it's, uh, you literally, your, your feet are under your butt. So it's a very upright, oh, it's a bumpy area. Very upright and comfortable position. Suspension, suspension here. Uh, not sure who does their suspension, but I would say that is uh, it's sufficient. I can't say it's great, but 
it does a great job with uh, does a great job with these crummy crummy roads. I bottomed out a few times on the front with the front forks, but that is mainly because I came too hot, too fast to a to a bump. One of those aggressive speed bumps. The rear suspension is uh, dual shocks in the back. I wouldn't want to say it's show. I don't know who does their uh, suspension. Never bottomed up in the back. Very good. The front, the front forks are. It's an inverted forks. They're inverted forks. Don't know how many millimeters. But I say, like I said before, they're uh, sufficient. They do the job. How about the sound? Well, as a as a thumper. They put a lot, apparently they put a lot of time and effort into the design and engineering of the sound. And the, the sound of the exhaust resembles Harley sound. Obviously it's not that deep twin, uh, very uh, familiar sound that we're used to. But the frequency of the exhaust sounds very, very Harley-like. Braking on this bike is, is good. It's not great, it's just good. I think the brakes are by Brembo. Not Brembo, but a company that owns, uh, a company named Bybre, which Bybre is by Brembo. A shortcut for by Brembo, Bybre. And they're a small company, owns a daughter company of uh, Brembo. And uh, they're the lower, the more economical option for, uh, for a Brembo brakes, and they do a great job. There's a single, a single uh, rotor in the front, and it does a decent job. It's got ABS on this bike, and the ABS works. Uh, I never, I didn't like it. It never locked up on me. I was never, thankfully, I was never in need for it. But it's got ABS, basic ABS in the front, infotainment system, or the the cluster in the front. It's a TFT but it's very comfortable to watch. I'll show you very soon. LCD, TFD something, a digital reading uh, screen with the kilometers per hour digitally shown to you. And then there's a, a tachometer or right uh, surrounding it with the red line on six and a half. There's uh, the odometer on it, of course, and uh, the fuel gauge, the sign of the bike. I think Harley did a great job over here with the design of the bike. The bike looks massive, it looks big. All the parts over here that in typical bikes over here in uh, the Far East, Asia, India, are usually made of all kinds of plastics. Harley and Hero over here uh, designed and uh, developed this bike with metal. This is all tin, all tins here are metal. The fuel tank is metal. The panels are metal. Wait, let me show you. This is really a nice, a nice part of the road. The fuel tank is beautiful over here. How nice is that, huh? The fuel tank is beautiful over here. And uh, the bike is nicely designed, very comfortable. The only flaw, I would say, or because it's a matter of uh, it's very subjective. The only thing that I'm not crazy about is the rear part of the bike. I think they created, they designed the fender in a very, or not appealing way to, to my eyes. The lines on the back are not nice, in my opinion. But only when the when you're not sitting on the bike. It's, it's the connection, the part where the wheel connects with the fender. So when the bike is not loaded and you're not on it, it, the lines don't work out, but once there's somebody on, somebody's on the bike and the bike is loaded, the wheel goes into uh, the wheel well or the bay area, and the line over there, the straight line over there is broken up and it looks great. But when the bike is not loaded and it's just standing with nobody on it, the lines are off. And one beautiful part of this bike are the rims. These rims are beautiful. Machined aluminum, I think. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Ah, the, uh, people washing, washing their clothes over here. 
Beautiful area. You know how hot all the Harley haters always uh, get at us at, oh, it's only got uh, 80, like on our baggers, oh, it's only got 100 horsepower. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh, it's so this, oh, it's so that. All the Harley haters, right? Because they don't know. It's all about the sum. The sum of the parts here of a Harley is way bigger than the actual math if you do. It's the whole Harley vibe, Harley feeling, Harley, it's an emotional thing. It's not about the numbers. It's not about the, the specs. It's the feeling. It's the, it's what you feel when you're on the bike. This bike is exactly that. So this bike falls into that category of the sum of the details are much bigger than what math would tell you. Does that make sense? Tr trying to translate a, a little saying that I know from Hebrew. So yeah, the sum of the parts is actually bigger than what the math would say. That's what this is. This whole package gives you the Harley vibe, the Harley feeling, the Harley emotions of owning this Harley. X440. This is great. So all in all, I would say the experience, the feeling, the vibes from this bike are very Harley-like. You can definitely see Harley DNA in this bike. Absolutely. It's a fun bike to ride. It's a blast. Now let's hope I can run through the bureaucracy of bringing this bike to America and for it to be affordable to bring over because I know it's kind of expensive. I have to figure out exactly how much to ship it and taxes and whatever. But if anybody in Harley is watching this video and considering to bring it, if you bring it, I'll buy another one in America for my daughter for me as well if I can't bring this one. Listen to that bump. <laughs> Watch it, buddy. Watch it. <laughs> Boshi has the camera. Nice twisties. <laughs> Here comes a cow. <laughs> uh, it's pretty cool. It's a wild road over here. It's beautiful. Look at the monkeys. Woo I don't know if you got to see the monkeys. There were monkeys over there. Three monkeys. Like two of us and three more. <laughs> Ready? What? Oh shit! What a! <laughs> there was police uh, radar over here. I don't know how much we are going. Let me move to the side. They're dealing with uh, Moshe is dealing with them. Well, he's uh, currently negotiating the price we need to pay. I'll tell you later when we move away a little bit. Very common practice here is you can negotiate, you can financially negotiate your way out of uh, out of a fine, if you know what I mean. I'll explain later. So uh, negotiating our way out of a fine, it can be an easier, uh, a cheaper way to negotiate your way out. Well, if you know. Uh, Common practices in uh, places where there's a lot of poverty and uh, officials don't make a lot of money. There's ways of uh, making things work and avoiding things. And I'm specifically being very, uh, very subtle about what I'm saying and not and not really saying things out. Uh, but you know what I mean, right? So well, there's a current negotiation of how to handle this matter. 
and it's how thick how thick uh, or how thin your wallet will be after this negotiation is uh, over once we're done with that we'll be on our way I don't know if we were speeding or not I have no clue but they stopped us and they're official and they have power so that's how it works so my buddy's been here for 30 years he has a lot of connections very influential as well with the car and the local community he <laughs> He did take a fine, but uh, we just got out of the, out of the uh, short negotiation uh, with, with our uh, crime. What were we going? Uh, four, four, mile, four kilometers per hour faster. Now, Moshe uh, is kind of influential over here in the community. And so initially, I saw what you did is pretty much, uh, don't talk to me like that. I'm not a tourist. I'm local. First thing to tell him that I'm a local, so he treats us without asking for bakshish that's the main thing ah, okay. otherwise as tourists he will tell you you pay five thousand okay i'll give you for two but you give me one so <laughs> to prevent that i put him down completely so there is no argument about that okay then when he sees i have a local driving license he calls me a going car going car means a citizen of goa it's going car okay then the next step is like when he told me 2,000 rupee, I said, okay, I want to see your name to be sure that actually the fine you give me is the right fine. So he told me, okay, I'll give you 1,000. So I told you, I want your name. I'll go to the minister to tell him that you are cheating me on the fine. So he didn't want to give me. And then he said, you know what? You don't want to pay. Okay, I'll let you go. I said, no, no, I want to pay. <laughs> so there was this negotiation. And um, we did take the fine at the end, and you got to understand the fine is around eight eight dollars, a thousand uh, rupee. Yeah. It's ten dollars, ten twelve dollars, uh, and that's after a neg negotiation. And he was oh, willing. He was willing to fine. The actual, actual fine. fine, but he was willing to drop it when he you told him to that you know the minister. To, huh? Yes. When he told him he knows the minister, he was like, oh, okay, don't don't pay. Everything is good. Yeah. So that's it, guys. That's it, guys. Hope you enjoy this one. I'm going to shut the camera off and head back home. I'm Sandy from Goa, India. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this. Oh, my God. They got mixed me up. <laughs> I'm Sandy watching Holy Shift. Till the next video, guys. Peace out.